The next line we're looking at says square is valid equals false. This is likely to be used for a while loop later on, so we'll come back to this later. Then we are assigning a zero to the variable choice. We immediately see what this is used for as a while loop then begins with while choice is less than one or greater than three. This is an example of a validation rule as it will repeat as long as they're not in the range, the range being one to three. These numbers are a reference to the options from the queue of moves they have to choose from. There is, however, a choice for the user to enter 9. This would mean they want to choose the move option offer to replace an item in their queue. But what happens in the code to make this work? Well, first we see an if statement checking if they entered 9. If this is the case, we call the method useMoveOptionOffer. Let's have a look at what this does. So the first line in useMoveOptionOffer ask the user to select which option from the queue the user wants to replace. And this integer value is stored in a variable called replace choice. In the next line, we see the calling of a method called update move option queue with offer, which takes parameters of replace choice minus one and create move option. Let's look at what update move option queue with offer does, long name. Update move option queue with offer is a method which takes two parameters and only one line of code. Essentially, what this line is doing is using a replace function which takes an item from an array and replaces it with a new value. The first parameter is the position of the item we want to replace, and the second parameter is the value we want to replace it with. Heading back into use move option offer, notice that the parameter for update move option queue with offer minuses one from the queue option. You pick for the replace choice. Well, this is because while visually the user is picking position 1 to 5, Python lists start with 0, meaning option 1 is actually position 0, option 2 is actually position 1, etc. The next line of code calls on the score to be changed with the use of the method change score. Let's look at that now. So looking at change score, it takes the parameter of amount and adds this onto our score. Now you might be wondering, or not, doesn't accepting a move offer reduce the score? Why are we adding to it? Well, we're technically not adding to it. Let's go back to how change score was called to see that parameter being used. Here you can see the formula to work out the change in the score that needs to occur. But you'll notice there's a negative sign next to this formula. This means the number generated will be a negative number, which will lead to the score being reduced when we call the change score method. Going back to the final line of move option offer position, a new option offer is found by having a random number generated. This number gives a position in a list storing all potential move option offers. Let's now head back to the play game method. The final line of our selection calls the method display state. We've already seen what this does. It shows the option offer as well as whose turn it is, etc. Next, we enter the first of two while loops, which check for the Boolean value we saw earlier. Square is valid. These loops will ensure the user is selecting one of their pieces to move and then choosing a valid spot to move it to. Let's break these down some more. So the first while loop begins with while not square is valid. We know from earlier in this method that square is valid is false, so we'll be entering this while loop. Now we have a variable called start square reference which calls upon the method get square reference. Let's look at this one now. The get square reference method takes one parameter, which is a description, which you can tell from when it is called is a string. Inside this method, we are simply asking for the user to enter an integer value. If we read the message being shown to the user, we want them to enter the row number, then the column number, referring to a square. What square is it? Well, that depends on the message stored in the description variable. If we look back at the value placed in the parameter when calling this method, we see it says containing the piece to move. So when the program is run, this will request for the user to state the position on the board of the piece they want to move to. This value is then returned to the start square reference variable and the play game method. One question you might have is why are we using a parameter for this? Why not just output the message as it is? Well, the reason for this is we can save lines of code. In fact, we can save an entire method or function by using a parameter, as we will also use the parameter when we want to inform the user to enter position they want to move the piece to. What you just seen here could be seen as an example of polymorphism. Anyways, let's go back to the play game method. Now, we've got our square reference of the piece we want to move. We now have the next line 
which will potentially change the square is by its value. Remember, this needs to be true in order for us to leave the while loop. This is an example of a validation rule, uh, where we check to ensure there is actually a piece in the square the user has selected. We can see it's using the check square is valid method, which takes parameters of start square reference, which is the value the user has entered, and then the Boolean value of true. Let's look at this method now. The first thing we see is a line saying if not check square in bounds, which takes the position the user entered as a parameter. We now have a line that says row equals square reference div 10. We know div or double forward slash in Python performs a division but produces an integer value, as in a number with no decimal points. If we do this with our two digit number, we are moving the digit on the right into the decimal position, so effectively removing it. This lets us only take the first number, which is important because in the user's reference, the first number is the row, so that makes sense. In the second line, we're doing the same but with columns. The percentage symbol finds the remainder. This symbol is known as mod or modulus. Let's say the user entered 34. In the row line, we div by 10, giving us 3.4, as a div, not divide, we make it 3, although it's 3. Then we're doing 34 mod 10. Well, 10 goes into 34 three times, remainder 4. Mod 10 will just remove the number on the left, leaving us with the second number, which is our column. Next, we are checking if an appropriate row or column has been entered by ensuring the number is not less than 1 or greater than the maximum number of rows or columns. If it is, out of, if it is out of this bound, we return false, and the while loop from the play game subroutine is repeated. If the number is in bounds, then true is returned and we can move on. That's it for this video. In the next video, we'll look at how the program determines whether or not a move was legal.